probably hearing me off air uh, during the commercial, kind of blowing on somebody here. Uh, I'm getting a text from a guy named Mike Miller. And he's saying, why do I never talk about hydroxychloroquine and Zithromax as being solutions or certified cures for coronavirus? My response is, it's inconclusive right now as to whether those two work for COVID-19. Can you address this so I don't have to? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that we need to be really careful at this point in time with medications and other treatments that are being used for this infection. Uh, certified cure is certainly not uh, a phrase I would use related to chloroquine or azithromycin and, and other things. There's really no known proven treatment uh, other than just supportive care for coronavirus. So when you're in the early stages of a brand new infection like this, I think that, and especially one that's so um, that's affecting everybody across the planet, there's a lot of people who are uh, wanting to get to a solution, get to a treatment immediately, and, right. and the, the tendency to jump to conclusions. We need to let the science uh, play out. We need to see if it's safe and beneficial to patients to use these medications in the setting of coronavirus. And that's happening now. There is research going on now with individuals and physicians can order those medications under the right circumstances. Right. So it really needs to be a decision made by the physician taking care of the patient. Do you feel, uh, we, do, do you feel doctor, that, that this whole, you mentioned, let things play out, that it's become very political. Um, it, it feels rushed, it feels political. You have even experts like Dr. Fauci are now being uh, under suspicion that they're in cahoots with other people to make money and all. I mean, can you speak to that? Yeah, I mean, I think that's sort of a you know statement about the the times we're in right now with uh, everything being controversial and politicized. I I think that now more than ever we really need to look at the scientific community to address whether or not a particular medication is safe and effective before we uh, sort of weigh in politically and turn it into a debate on uh, you know television. I think that we need to. Uh, do the proper science. We need to have um, properly enrolled patients having uh, treatments done that are still at this stage uh, theoretical and uh, potentially beneficial. But we also need to understand that there's risks with just about every medication that is given to patients. Right. And we don't want to take on those risks without understanding fully the benefits. Okay. Now, I do think that with a new infection like this, we need to accelerate the process to the extent we possibly can and put resources into it. Uh, and not have it take years and years because this is obviously a, a pandemic situation. Yeah, it, it feels like they're really anxious to get to uh, uh, a vaccine uh, much sooner than, than normally uh, we do. Okay, next one coming in, a text for Dr. Evans. Are there different strains of COVID-19? Well, at this point, I don't think that there are considered to be different strains of COVID-19 particularly. I think that's a question that we probably have to ask an epidemiologist or an infectious disease expert. Um, you know, I'm an emergency physician, so at this point in time, what we're looking at is essentially one infection. The question is, will it change over time? Will it, you know, uh, mutate and change over time like other viruses do, like influenza, for example? Um, but uh, at this point, we're not really sure how it's going to behave over time. Uh, there's a lot of questions about how it will behave in different types of weather scenarios, etc. And so I think we'll we'll know more in the months to come. But right now, we don't. Okay, next one coming in for Dr. Evans. My husband has a sore throat. He is tired. Should we be concerned that maybe this is the onset of uh, coronavirus? Yeah, you know, sore throat is not one of the, I mean, sore throat can occur with, uh, with COVID-19 and actually uh, fatigue uh, is definitely a, a common symptom of COVID-19. Um, but, uh, you know, more common is fever and cough. Uh, those are the more common symptoms, but there's a range of symptoms. I mean, you, you could there's, if you, uh, if you pull every person that's had COVID-19, you're going to get a very long list of symptoms that go along with it. So it's hard to exclude the possibility of it just based upon symptoms that are sort of atypical. Um, the question is whether or not everybody with mild symptoms ought to get a, a test. Uh, and, you know, in this country, we haven't had access to uh, large scale testing for the entire population. Other countries have uh, been able to offer that actually mm -hmm. to their populations more easily. So um, at this point in time, the public health department has, has said essentially, if you're not, you know, very ill, what you should do is stay home, try to not infect anybody else, whether it's COVID-19 or another infection, right, uh, or something else entirely, uh, just stay home, self quarantine, and then call your physician if you have any questions. As uh, needed. Yeah, because you, you know, you know, your own body, right, doctor? I mean, you know, when you've 
had trouble breathing before, and then in this case, you're really having issues you've never had before, you probably, right. yes or no, that's the time to, to move ahead, right? Yeah, that's, okay. that's the time to, to ask questions of your physician. And certainly if you're getting seriously ill, uh, short of breath, mm -hmm. uh, very high fevers or other concerning situations like that, then, then you need to come into the okay. hospital, the emergency department, and, and ideally give them forewarning that you're on your way. Okay, sounds good. More